Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. There's a prayer that I like very much that we don't say very often in church. It's found on page 61 of your Book of Common Prayer. And it's the prayer, the collect for Labor Day. It begins, Almighty God, you have so linked our lives with one another that all we do affects for good or evil, all other lives. So guide us in the work we do, that we may not do it for self alone, but for the common good. I like this prayer because it reminds us that we are members of a community and that we live best together when we live in harmony and mutual respect. Which brings me to call our attention to, to today's lesson from the Hebrew scriptures, the Decalogue or Ten Commandments has a communal thrust given to the whole people of God. They address public ethics of a people, the, the public ethics of a people, more than the private morality of an individual. At the same time, also, the commandments come as a gift from God to shape our individual lives, to be worthy of the God who created us, the God who made everlasting covenant with us, and the God who redeemed us. For the ancient Jews, their redemption came at Sinai when they escaped from the, their bondage in Egypt. They did not drown in the Red Sea. They reached safely dry land. For us, our redemption comes in our Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. How will we repay God for this miraculous gift of salvation? And we repeat, God have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. The oldest part of the Hebrew scriptures is not Genesis, although that's usually what we read first. The oldest part of the Hebrew narrative is told in this story, in their deliverance and their redemption from slavery. It's above all the story of God's action told in this redemption. God is setting his people free from their bondage. This experience of deliverance was so profound, so important, that the Jews never forgot it and celebrate it to this day. The giving of the Torah or the teaching 
is celebrated during the Jewish festival of Shvat. And there is a wealth of stories and legends flowing from Shabbat. The name Yahweh, the name Jesus means Yahweh. Jesus saves. It is a statement of belief. It is a creed. And it is a prayer. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in God and not be afraid, Isaiah writes. We can trust in God for the future because God has been faithful in the past. Yahweh was the God of Jesus, a Jew. And Jesus told us he came to fulfill the law, not to surpass it. He said in John, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so we read the covenant today. It is as important to us today as it ever was. Our journey of Lent comes as a gift to the church. It's an opportunity to confess the ways that we have gone astray and squandered God's gift, to renew the vibrancy and faithfulness of our worship. We recite the Ten Commandments today as a thank you, not to receive God's forgiveness, for we have already been forgiven. We recite the commandments as a light for our way and to remind us that in Christ, we too have been rescued. It doesn't take a wizard to tell that we are as lost and wandering today as we have ever been. We pray that God will come to our rescue and restore us now before we destroy each other. One hopeful sign is the ever-increasing practice of modern-day Jews. More and more observant Jews take the first night of Shabbat by staying up all night to study the Torah and the Talmud and other sacred writings. They offer this all-night gathering known as Tukuban for the mending of the world. Let us be reminded that God's Ten Commandments have been around for a long time and we could do much worse than to pray for those whose love lives are linked with ours, though we know them not. We are God's own people. May we live blessed by the commandments of God, faithfully in holy covenant. And may we too pray for the mending of the world. <laughs>